Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity to, to break the bread of life. Father, you're doing something in the earth realm. You're doing something for and with us, making the difference for us, dear Lord. And as we gain the access to the anointed word of God, we gain access, dear Lord, to the mysteries that set us free. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you are doing in us and through us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the people. Thank you, dear Lord, for the anointing that removes every burden and destroys every yoke. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Are we good? All right, we're getting hand signs, hand signals over there. There are a couple of people, um, and I don't know if you're in the room because I can't see the room right now. Um, we need to connect um, over the course of this week. And um, let me put it out like this. We don't normally connect during the week, but you know I'm talking to you. I encourage you to reach out to me. Um, I don't want to give initials because then people will know who I'm talking about. And all, but because a couple of people and you, you, you've been registering in my spirit. So don't be surprised if I call or email or whatever I do. I'm just saying that we need to connect. And I don't know why. OK, I don't have an agenda. I don't have a request or anything like that. I just feel in my spirit that we need to connect. Amen. Amen. I want you to open your Bibles. Are we ready? Okay. I'm, listen, I keep checking because the enemy, the enemy been fooling with me. And so I don't know, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know how to put my dukes up, you know. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. <laughs> Are you ready? Turn with me in your uh, Bibles to uh, the Gospel of Mark. Uh, Mark chapter 6 and verse number, number 2. Mark 6 and 2. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. That's I use. I like that when it, you know, what amen is a statement. It's an exclamation. It's a question, uh, depending on how you put it. When I say amen, <laughs> all the people say amen. Boy, I look forward to seeing you and us being in the same room. I am. Well, I haven't. I got to clear something before I release it. So let me. <laughs> are you at are you at Mark chapter six, verse number two? All right, let's look at this. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence has this man these things? All right. So it's the Sabbath day. And he began to teach. He being Jesus began to teach. And um, when they were listening to him preach or teach the word of God, they were astonished. You know, sometimes you go to a meeting and the, the teaching starts and it's boring. But not this time. They were astonished. And this is what they began. They began to whisper in the back of the room during Bible study. He said, and they said, from whence hath this man, boy, they were, and boy, they, wasn't, they weren't respecting Jesus at all. From whence hath this man these things, what things? Are you ready? What and what wisdom? If you're able to write in your Bible, write down the word wisdom. And that is which is given unto him that even such mighty works shall be wrought in his hands. This must have been an on fire Bible study meeting or synagogue or Saturday meeting synagogue. Well, whatever day it was, whatever day it was, it was awesome. Why? Because they were astonished. They came and it was like um, people were asking them after service. They were saying, well, how was service today? You know what they said? It was life changing. Why? Because the man of God, he spoke with wisdom and with mighty works. Glory be to God. They were wrought by his hands. I cannot see you this morning, but you can see me. You see my hand by this hand pointing at you. Mighty works. Come on. Today is your day. 
Say amen, somebody. Listen, if you believe it, say amen. If you want to believe it, say amen. This is your day. See, this is what I'm finding out, and this is why this is so important. Biblical wisdom is not the wisdom of mighty works. Biblical wisdom manifests in mighty works. Come on. Everybody can talk about some great thing. This is not that. Biblical wisdom, it manifests in mighty works. Biblical wisdom is not always appealing to the flesh, but it always manifests in mighty works. Come on, somebody. We told you last week that um, it, it could be that the wisdom of God is sweet to the tongue, meaning I enjoy saying it. Um, I enjoy repeating it, but it's bitter to the belly, meaning uh, I have your meaning. There are times when the word of God, it comes in and it's awesome, but it's kind of tough to digest. That's what um, uh, the Apostle Paul was saying when he was saying, he said, um, by this time, you ought to be on strong meat, but you're on the milk. Milk, um, uh, listen, I was getting ready to say, it's easy on the belly, and somebody said, I'm lactose intolerant. I'm not talking to you. I'm saying, <laughs> come on, somebody, let's get to this. What I'm saying is, is that, Everybody likes the items that are easily or more readily digest, but the strength, come on now, the strength or the, the strong meat that gives you the nutrients that you need for great exploits, it's, it requires a mature spiritual digestive tract. Amen. And, and by this time, that's what Apostle Paul was saying, you ought to be eating meat. Well, come on now. How many of you like meat? Fire up the grill, brother. Listen, this is strong meat time. I'm saying, uh, let me put it in another way, uh, because I want you to get it this morning. I don't want to just talk and say amen. I want to get it this morning. Have you ever, ever heard this phrase where people talk about uh, the bitter truth? The bitter truth. And, and that means that, you know, it's tough, but it's true. Um, sometimes a bitter truth can be something, oh, it's difficult or unpleasant. However, it's the truth, not my version of the truth or everybody's truth is different. It's just the truth, just kind of like gravity. Gravity is the truth. It's a law. I don't care who you are or who you think you are. Gravity works for you the same way every time. It is the truth. If you jump, jump off the top of a building, it's the bitter truth. Easy to leap, hard to digest. I'm saying this. Um, let's put it in a different context. The whole notion of tithing. For some, they read it and they see the benefit of the tithe over in Malachi. Oh, amen, amen. But then it comes time to give and it's the bitter truth. Because they're not willing to give the tithe in order to receive the benefit. And that has been the dividing line for signs, wonders, and miracles. When Jesus was teaching the word of God in the synagogue, wisdom was flowing and he was walking in it and it was producing signs, wonders, and miracles at his hand. Say amen. For, listen, for some of you right now, you're saying, he's talking about me. Why am I talking about you? Because you know that that dividing line has kept you from the promises of God. Glory be to God. They've been available to you, but they were kind of tough to digest. So the, the question is, will you choose to prosper along the way or just be along the way? I'm talking about prosper by the word of God. See, this is what I believe. I believe that this church, I'm talking about Faith Life Christian Center, I'm talking about you, that you are poised for great exploits poised for great exploits. I believe that you may be a citizen of 
whatever city you're in, or certainly uh, United States if you're in the United States, but, but, but there's coming a time soon that you'll be considered a global citizen. Global citizens will arise from this church. The question is, will you be one? Pastor, what is a global citizen? Somebody that has an impact all over the globe? Amen. I see your business. Look at somebody say, I know he's talking about me right now. I see your business. It's a shift moving from existing on the internet, from your kitchen table, come on now, your den, wherever you perform, to, to global. Say amen, somebody. Come on now. Got to move up, right? In Deuteronomy chapter 29, uh, 29, this is what it says. Oh, I'm paraphrasing. It says, the secret things belong to God. But those things which are revealed, they belong to us and to our children forever. Why is that? So that we can do the words of his law. Every secret in the kingdom is for your benefit. It's a secret because it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody just flipping through the Bible and thumbing through or whatever. It's a secret. It's, you, you ever heard of family secrets? Usually people think of that as something that is tawdry or, or distasteful or something. Not in this case. Watch this. Over in Luke chapter 9, um, verse 1, um, Jesus called the uh, disciples together. And this is what he did. He gave them power over all devils to cure diseases. Don't you think that was a secret? Come on, somebody. That, that was a secret. But, but, this, but he did it. He gave those disciples, he gave them power over all devils. Say amen, somebody. And to cure diseases. He, he, power and authority. So, so when he gave them that power and that authority, that became their and our foundation for outstanding accomplishments. Come on now. Why is that? Because God is no respecter of, of persons. He gave those disciples are you a disciple? It only means the disciplined ones in the kingdom of God. Disciple discipline. Are you disciplined in the word of God? Then you are one of his disciples. Amen. And he gave them power over unclean spirits and to heal. Glory be to God. So let's take a quick inventory. Number one, they had power. Number two, they had authority from God. Look at your neighbor and say, this is life changing. <laughs> My, now, I know you've heard it, but I want you to get the energy and the power behind it. And that's what's necessary to get every job done. You need power and you need authority. We, we know that it worked um, because we go down in uh, Luke chapter 10 and verse number 19. And it says, and the 70 returned again with now. See, we weren't, we weren't, he it wasn't just the 12, he gave, you know, um, I remember one preacher saying, the inside group was the 12. There was an inside group of the inside group that were named Peter, James, and John, but there were many people that followed Jesus. And in this case, he sent out 70 with power and authority. And in Luke 10, 17, it says, and the 70 came back, having been empowered, with power and authority. They came back and, and they came back with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's break this down just a little bit. Because see, I'm talking about something that being life changing. They had become accustomed to devils pushing back. Devil's pushing back. Somebody has uh, something, a uh, sickness or disease. Come out in Jesus' name. 
And the devil's saying, uh-uh. <laughs> and then they just, they just go, well, I prayed. They're saying, Lord, this was different. When we went out of here with your power and your authority, come on, somebody, you know that belongs to you. They said, this time, even the devils were subject to us in your name. And then Jesus said, he broke out, he said, listen, I beheld Satan fall as a, a, a lightning from the sky, and I give you power. He, he was putting it on him. He had already given him power and authority, but now he's, he's making it out to another level. What does this have to do with our sermon today? Everything. Because if I can't see the benefit of the power and the anointing and the blessing, I will not desire it. I will not think of it or even meditate on how it functions or is, can be used in my life. They were already excited. Are you excited today? Say, man, somebody, there, there ought to be goosebumps on you right now. I give unto you power and authority to tread on serpents. Come on. Every snake in the grass, serpents. Everything hiding in the bushes, waiting to pounce. I've given you power over that. I've given you power over serpents and over scorpions. Whew. Scorpions come to do what? To sting and to poison. Folks, that's what the enemy's trying to do with the words, thoughts, and deeds of this day and age. So much going on with the political unrest. That we're, we, what, we're, I'm 15 minutes from Brooklyn Center, or 10 minutes, whatever it is, from Brooklyn Center, where all of the unrest has been gone on because of things going on in the media. You're hearing about looting and all kinds of things all over this country because of social unrest, because there is a, there is a spirit of anxiety that is in the land that is moving and, and, and shaking and causing dysfunction. This is what Jesus said, I've given you power. Come on, folk. This is not just a Bible study. This is power. I've given you power over serpents and scorpions and over all of the power. How much is left after all? None. And over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said, notwithstanding, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice because your name is written in, the hev in heaven. He said, folks, this is the way it has been established for us. He gave them power and authority so that they could deliver them that, that he had given them to deliver. Come on now. You know, um, um, Jesus said it like this in um, Luke 4.18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me. I, I want you to see this thread. Jesus was anointed and he gave the disciples anointing. What does anointing mean? Anointed means he had authorized me. He has empowered me to, to do what? To do what? God told him he did. Okay, we have, we have all kinds of, we have different issues today. Glory be to God. All right. All right, all right. Well, listen, devil, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. I know, listen, I know you don't want this word going out, but I got you now. <laughs> I got you now. We are talking to global citizens. Their businesses are booming. Say amen. The Lord has given you knowledge of witty invention now in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Get this thing. We're in gear. We have been given power and authority. Why? To get the job done. Even the devils are subject unto, your, unto you. In your, now we've got to use the power. Glory be to God. And the Lord said, let's put this in perspective. I have put you in authority in the earth realm. He said, but it's more important that your name be written in heaven. He gave them power and authority so that they could deliver. Ha, so that they could deliver. It gave them what, what? It gave them what they needed 
say amen. But he said, it has been given unto me, and I have given unto you. You know what he did? He gave them what he had. Let me tell you what. If I have a dollar, I, I think I changed my pants this morning. I don't know if I have a dollar in, in these pants. But if I have a dollar, you know what? I can take that. No, let me use something different. Let's say I got, uh, you see my face changing already? Let's say I have some cologne. And it's a good one. It's one of those, uh, I'm not a cologne wearer, but it's one of those oils. You know what I mean? And I, I, I put it on me, and it's on me. And, and you know, watch this, you know it's on me. Because when I come around, About a minute before you see me, you smell the anointing. You, you know somebody like that? Glory be to God. Man, but, but before I turn the corner, that cloud of anointing comes on. And then, and then there's, this, <laughs> there's this brother I used to work uh, at a place. He, and and when, when, he, when, watch, when he had been in the room, I don't know if he touched anything or just walked in the room, folks. But when he had been in the room, everybody come in the room afterwards says, uh, hey, uh, is so-and-so been in here? <laughs> and they knew he had. Why? Because of the anointing. Glory be to God. Now, now okay, come on, come on now. Amen. Now, now, the anointing, if I have it on me, I can give it to you. That's what I was getting at. I can, boy, I was going to say, if, if you didn't want the anointing of that brother's cologne, don't shake his hand. <laughs> don't, are you with me? Don't shake his hand. But watch this. If you want the anointing of Jesus, all you have to do is shake his hand. All you have to do is embrace him. Come on, somebody. Embrace him how? By embracing his word, by shaking hands and be in agreement with the word of God. When in Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. He hath, watch this, authorized and empowered me to, that, that's what anointed uh, means, authorized and empowered me. And because he has uh, authorized and empowered me, I authorize you. He has anointed me. He has empowered me. I'm talking to you now to do what? Preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So he was anointed and he was empowered. Now you want to know the source of his authority, which positioned him? to deliver at a high level. Turn with me to Luke chapter 9 and verse number 1. Glory be to God. I was going to teach this this morning, but um, I feel like that preach, hey, amen, is coming out just a little bit. But hey, this is for you. Say amen, somebody. This is you. This is you. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. I can just quote it, but I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm giving you time to be there. Used to be um, with uh, our uh, Bibles. It might take you a minute now. You just key it on in, right? Amen. Watch this. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority. This is when he's giving it to the 12 over all the devils and to cure diseases. Come on now, he's talking about you. Verse number two, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Um, the Apostle Paul said something over in the book of Ephesians. 
He said, unto me that is less than all of the saints. That's Ephesians uh, 3, 8. Unto me that is less than the saints, of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach uh, among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of God. And he was doing that because he said his charge was to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. That's uh, verse 9, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God. I'm talking about secrets this morning. Who created all things by Jesus Christ. Am I right about it? Verse 10 goes on to say uh, that the purpose or the intent uh, was uh, the principles and the powers in heavenly places might be known to the church. What? The manifold wisdom of God. Wow according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, this is letting us know that the anointing and the power is the change agent. It's the difference maker for everything. And I know we're talking about, um, we're, call, we're talking about kingdom prosperity, but there is no kingdom prosperity without the anointing of God. Because the anointing, the power, and the capacity of the kingdom is the fuel that, 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 that causes us to be the head and not the tail. That's why um, um, uh, Peter, on the way into the temple, he's going through the gate beautiful. Remember, that's over in Act 3 and 6. And as they were going through, uh, there was a beggar, and he was a known a known suspect, like that guy that's at the corner waving the card. Um, no, you, every day he's there, that's his job. That's his job. Amen. But this day, man of God was coming through. And Peter said to him, he, he was rattling his cup. Peter said to him, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have. Come on now. He had the anointing, he had authority, he had ability, and he knew how to use it. Such as if I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's a lot of people named Jesus walking around. He said, I'm not talking about them, I'm talking about this one. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And, and he knew he had authority. Authority to do what? Are you ready for this one? He had authority to get people back on their feet. Glory be to God. And the Lord has loosed that authority in this room today. Say amen, somebody. The Lord has given. There are people who to other people have looked like they're on their feet. But when I said that he had the authority to get people back on your feet, you were hoping. You were saying, amen. You were saying, that's me today. Let me tell you what. Not only do I have authority to get you back on your feet, but you have authority to get back on your feet. <laughs> Glory be to God. The Lord, the Lord has showed me that, that, the, that the source of my authority is calling. That's the anointing. Not only is the Lord positioning you to get back on your feet, but it's calling you to wealth. The anointing of God is available to a whosoever. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 15, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, uh, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. What it said, my favorite, one of my favorite texts, uh, 1 John 4 and 16, and we have known and believed. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we have known and believed, watch this, the love that God has toward us. I don't care who you are or where you are right now, God loves you. We've known and believed it. You've known about it, now known and believed it needs to be in your voice. God is love, and he that dwelleth in uh, love dwelleth in God, and God in him. See, um, I heard him 
um, to clear clearly. How can I say this? God wants us at peace with him. Not just be at peace, but he wants you to be at peace um, and accept the assignment of being frontline forces. I was, uh, uh, years ago, I was with a guy, um, and I'm an, uh, I'm guessing I'm a fair sized man, maybe an average size, if, if not, whatever, size man. And this guy towered over me. And I'm, and I'm looking up like this is how, like this is how I had to look, a huge hulk of a man. And he was talking about he had uh, been in the military. And I said, oh, uh, what did you do in the military? And you know what he said? Big, big, like, like I'm saying, he's a big guy. He said, I was in the front line forces. And I'm thinking to myself, man, that's, that's, that's wrong. How is the Army going to take the, if, if there was ever a physical target, how is the Army going to take the biggest physical target that they find and put him in front line forces? Now, number one, for the natural Army, it, he was the most expendable. First one shot at, first one have an opportunity to die. But the Lord, as I was studying for this message, the Lord was saying, son, I need you to be the frontline force. And immediately I thought of that brother. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, he, Lord said, wait a minute, wait a minute. The assignment of being the frontline forces. I'm the first one to the rescue. <laughs> that people that would hear from, uh, for people that would hear the word of God. I'm the first one to rescue people that have been enduring the dullness of the decades that they have been hearing of good preaching. Good preaching has produced dullness for decades. He said, Pastor, are you you're talking about preachers? No, 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 no. I'm not talking about a powerful get to do it right now teaching. I'm just talking about good teaching. People have been happy hearing a good word. Folks, we are frontline forces. My goodness. Uh, year, years ago, my wife and I, we were looking for our uh, first home. And, um, you know, we were looking within our budget, what have you, what have you. And, and it was, a, we were able to get a nice home, but, um, some homes uh, fell in our range that had I known what it was going to look like before I got in there, I never would have went in there. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Well, there's this one home, and I, I remember just like it, I remember like it was th this day. And the people who lived there, they had, um, you know, they had steps going, you know, upstairs, what have you, uh, to where the bedrooms were, and clearly. Um, at one point, the steps had been carpeted. Um, and whatever happened to the steps, whether it was wear and tear or dirt or whatever, well, they didn't um, rip up the old carpeting and put down new carpeting. They carpeted over. Okay? And you say, okay, Pastor, what's the big deal? All right. Well, apparently they had done this like five times because there was carpet over carpet over carpet and the, the thing about that is you can feel the strength of the boards underneath but the carpet begins to lose its definition so that rather than a bull nose and you know and then a, a rise and run the the run or the rise and then the run and then a rise and a run it became less and less less defined and so when we went up, while we could go up the steps and come down the steps, it was fairly precarious because it, 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 there was no more definition. It, there was no more definition. And, and, and what has happened is a lot of good preaching has 
put another layer over the strength of the step and it has lacked definition. And so the, the dullness has caused people to not see the power in being a frontline force or have no desire to be a frontline force because they haven't seen themselves as being equipped. I don't know why I'm preaching this thing like I am. Let me tell you what the Lord said. Dullness, layers of dullness have made people mediocre and willing to tolerate things that they shouldn't ever tolerate. The Lord told me to come in here and make my people rich. I'm talking about you right now. Now, see, so, 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 so in the name of Jesus, this can't be just another sermon because you don't need another sermon. Watch this. You don't need another layer just to smooth over and make the last layer look clean. Turn, turn with me. This is the scripture that he gave me in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 6 and verse number 10. In 2 Corinthians 6.10, he says, And as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, making many rich. Now, I want you to see that because you may not have seen me. I'm not poor, but you may not have seen me living in the mansion that I'm about to live in. Say amen, somebody. He said, but rejoicing, he said, All, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich. I want you to underline that. As poor, that means not have arrived yet, but having, but, but making many rich, having not, nothing, and yet possessing all things. What is, it, what is God saying to you today through this message? God is saying to you, don't discount what I have said to you by looking at what I have. Yet poor, making many rich. He said, this is your breakthrough. You are here today to break through your business breakthrough. Say amen, somebody. Something on the inside of you is poised to come out in a profound way. That's why you're here today. That's why you followed me into the Zoom room. Have you heard some of the things from Pulfus before? Maybe so. But today is different. Why is that? Because it's life changing. Over in uh, 2 Corinthians 6.10, yet as poor, making many rich, as having nothing yet, possessing all things. He's saying to you today, you don't have to, watch it, not you, I don't have to look at it, like it today, to make it happen for you today. Starting today, as you obey him, he is turning your testimonies around. Uh, th this, uh, this, this ministry, the Lord has shown it to me. This, this ministry is going to be a headliner. What does that mean? Head, make the headlines in the local paper or on the, on the new, whatever, whatever news feed you're getting. This ministry shall be a headliner in declaring the prosperity of the children of God. How are we going to know? Because of the signs following. We are in the last of the last days. It was 2,000 years from Abraham to David. It was 2,000 years from David to Jesus. And from Jesus to us, guess what? 2,000. Folks, we're in the last of the last days. If not now, when? I'm talking about prosperity. And if not us, who? Are someone listening to me today? You're listening today. You will be the living proof of the power and the prosperity of God. This, this summer, uh, we're getting warmer now, maybe in the spring, uh, we're having a business breakthrough seminar. What are we talking about, business by the kingdom? I've heard of those before. I passed, I've been to those before. Are you rich yet? Have you broken through yet? 
Glory be to God. Folks, this, the, this thing has begun. The church has been designed by God as a breakthrough platform for anyone who will. How did he do it? I have given you authority. I have given you anointing. God is raising up a people, folks, and it has already begun. Every time God gives an order, he backs it with the anointing and power. So this assignment is not one that leaves us hanging on to what to do next. We are literally in pursuit of a divine mandate. Everyone under the sound of my voice today is ordained. A giant for the kingdom of God. Now what? Be advised that, that this ministry has a very clear breakthrough assignment. If you've been with me for any length of time, we've been singing it, we've been talking about it. Breakthrough in your business, breakthrough in your finance, breakthrough in your marriage, breakthrough in your home, breakthrough, come on now, breakthrough, breakthrough out of your singleness, say amen. How is this possible? Turn with me to 1 John chapter 4, verse number uh, 16. We just read it, let me quote it, one of my favorites. And we have known and believed the love that God has toward us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in God dwelleth in, uh, he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God dwelleth in him. Come on, that's a good place to shout glory. <laughs> because God is building you as a people to be envied. A people of honor. A people of anointing. And, and, and by this people, that have been anointed, honored, and empowered, God will, by this people, he's going to storm the world. The whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the power of God. Everyone that is a part of this divine mandate, it might be a man, it might be a woman, but you are about to be a man or a woman to be envied. If you're in that number, shout glory. Come on, somebody. See, see, this means that every one of you is a person that is anointed. And the anointing uh, has certain laws associated with it. You know, like water is wet. That's a law. Water is wet. The anointing. is attractive. It attracts attention. It just attracts. It, it, the anoint, that, that's why when uh, the, the anointing attracts people to it, we, everybody wants to go to something anointed. Uh, the, the, the fair, very, the very, when, when you're under the anointing, the very first thing the anointing does to you is make you attractive. Well, I'm, and I'm not talking about in any tawdry way. I'm talking about um, if you're leading a Bible study, the, the anointing makes you attractive. That's why people want to come to the Bible study. Amen. That's why people go, that's why people, people are asking, watch this. We've had problems in this uh, country with men of God being less than honorable. And some of them uh, have had Relationships with people they had no business having relationship with. And people have asked the question, how can that so-and-so find somebody that wants to even spend a minute with him, so-and-so, in the natural realm? Because the anointing is attractive. I'll leave it like that. Turn with me to Zechariah chapter 8, verse number 23. Ah, I don't know how I went down that road, but I did. I got back. I got back. Amen. Zechariah 8 and 23, let me tell you what it says. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. In those days it's going to come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of all of the nations and shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. I mean, you know, you're a spiritual Jew. And say, we will go with you. I told you it was attractive. Now, be, and, and because we have heard that God is with you, they will go with you in business. They will go with you in industry. They will go with you as you evangelize. They'll come because they're, they've heard 
that God is with you. And one of the most underpreached topics in scripture is managing the initial stress of the assignment. There I said, I got it out. He said, Pastor, where'd that come from? Well, you know, I've been talking around and talking about it all day, but one of the things that I said is sometimes that, that word is sweet to your mouth, but it's kind of hard to digest. I want to be the frontline forces for the Lord. Amen. We are powerful for the Lord, but I don't, you know, dealing with all the crazies. I don't know if I want, listen, listen. When, when you hear the assignment is excitement, but when the reality of the assignment kicks in, people say, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. That's quite a bit, Pastor. And so I'm, I'm talking about this prosperity in the kingdom, and I'm coming at it, and I hope you are with me, because I'm coming at it from a lot of ways. But, but this is what I'm doing now. I'm saying this. Folks, this is a secret of the kingdom, and this is so powerful. Once you hear the word of God, the power of the word of God, get the direction and the assignment of the word of God. It sounds awesome. But when you come down to the place of engagement and began to look at the reality of what the assignment includes, sometimes there is internal stress, but if I can press beyond the stress moment and stay with the power, the manifestation of the power and the anointing of God will be on my life. Let me give you some examples from the scripture. God was talking to Abram. Here's the excitement. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And you're going to be a blessing. How is that going to happen, Lord? Watch this. I need you to go to a land that I will show you. <laughs> Come out of Ur of the Chaldees. Come out from your father's house. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So there was excitement. I'll bless you. I'll make your name great. and You'll be a blessing. Where is that going to take place? I'm taking you out of your comfort zone. And I'm taking you to a place that I'm going to show you. Where is it? Start walking. Whew. Glory be to God. If I can get past that initial discomfort, then I have the ability, not the ability, I have the distinction of staying in the anointing because the anointing is where the voice of God is moving. Go to a land that I will show you, that's where the anointing was. That's where the manifestation is. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great, and you'll be a blessing. It was in the anointing, but the anointing was leaving there. His anointing was leaving there into a land that he didn't know about. Let me show you another example. I need you to go to a land that I will show you. I need you to stay here, but here there's a famine in the land. I want to, I'm talking about Isaac, uh, I, I, Isaac. Lord, there's a famine in this land, but there's food in Egypt. The Lord said, stay here. Stay here. I'll bless you. There's no food here, Lord. Okay, but stay here. Because the anointing is where the word of God places you. Children of Israel, I've given you the land. Yay! But it's occupied. Boo! They're going based on what they see. But the anointing or the power of God is where God showed you or where he told you to go. See, by faith, we're going to have to get past the initial discomfort and get to the action steps. The problem has been uh, getting the assignment from God and then trying to do it on our own. 
Come on now. How many of you know somebody? I'm, you know, I'm not talking about you, but you know somebody who has received the assignment from God and you knew it was from God and you said amen. But then you didn't want to do it the way he said do it because that looked like a problem. <laughs> What'd you do? You wanted to obey God, but it was very tempting to try to do it in your own strength. Some of you can feel the tide shifting right now. I'm, I'm taking the cover off of something that you've known was there, but it was comfortably covered. You can feel the tide shifting already. May all of the secrets that God shows you today at and over the rest of your life be followed and let them manifest just as God said. Glory be to God, that your assignment fits. And that fit is so tight, you know God told you this. You, listen, you know, you know. See, as believers, as the children of God, we must tap into the creative, pardon me, creative power of God. The creative power of God, it causes your desire to be manifest in him. Over in Proverbs 3.19, it says, The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. And by understanding, he established the heavens. He goes on to say, O oh Lord, how manifold are thy works and all thy wisdom. Thou hast made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Yeah, the riches are where the anointing is for you. In Proverbs 9 and 12, if thou be wise, then thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scorneth, thou shalt bear it alone. Man, oh man. So we, we've got to look at the characteristics of men who enjoy the supernatural breakthrough from Scripture. And let's see if we can discover some of the earmarks to make that pathway our pathway. Come on now. Now, no, um, uh, what time do we start? Okay, I got like, give me five minutes. I've been talking about him, but let's look at Abraham just a little deeper. Um, God said, I'll bless you. I'll make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Abraham, his strength was in his delightsome obedience to Almighty God. In Genesis uh, 12 and 1, uh, the Lord said to Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred to thy father's house and to the land that I will show you. We've been quoting that. And then he goes on down to say, and so um, I believe it's down to verse like four, three, four, and Abraham departed. So what did he do? He followed the instructions. So he got past the initial, what are you talking about, Lord, phase and got into the obedience phase like right now. So Abram, verse four, verse four, Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. They said Lot went with him. I don't know about that. But, but, and Abraham was 75 years old when he left his father's house. Glory be to God. Come on now. Let's follow how the anointing followed. Look in Genesis chapter 17, verse number 10. This is my covenant. Which, shall, which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child, he's talking to Abram, every man child is among you shall be circumcised. Wait a minute, Lord. That means we got to bleed. Uh, not only that. What did he say? You're going to circumcise the flesh of your foreskin? That's going to be a token of your covenant between you and me. And then all of the babies that are eight years old, all the male babies that are eight years old, going to circumcise them. And you're going to circumcise everybody born in the house. And you're going to uh, circumcise. And, and, that, that, and then the next one says, and everyone that you bought with money. He not, 
buying slaves necessarily, everyone that you hire. Can you imagine going down there to get the job of your dreams and they say, okay, one of the requirements for employment here is circumcision. You say, what? <laughs> well, that makes some people turn around. Not just that. Everybody was born in the house. I think I said that. Everybody that was hired, everybody needs to be circumcised. Why? Because the Lord said, if they're going to be with you, they have to be under covenant. And it shall be what? An everlasting covenant. Man. Man. You know what Abraham said? Okay. Whew. Whew. That's why the anointing was on him. He kept saying, okay, not just okay, not just lip service. He kept saying, okay, and doing what God had told him to do. Over in Genesis 22, uh, he's again talking to Abraham. He not, this man, well, he won't let him go. He says, okay, this is what I need you to do. I need you to take your son, your only son, Isaac, the one who you love, and and take him up on the mountain over there and uh, then offer burnt offering, pray a little bit. And then um, uh, I need you to kill him for me. Now, come on, man. Abraham got up early in the morning, got the donkey, got a couple of young men with him, Isaac, his son, got the wood because he didn't know if he was going to find wood along the way. He went up prepared, say amen, somebody. He went to the place God told him about, but the Lord had already showed him in a vision. There was a ram in a bush. When we follow the anointing of God, the anointing follows us. There's no escape. They, no, there, there's no escape. Um, th th that's how the anointing works. And so we've been We've been preaching about the anointing. We've been shouting about the anointing. We've been talking. We've been alluding to the anointing. We've been imitating those who we perceived had the anointing. But the anointing is simple. Hear God. Do what he tells you to do. The way he told you to do it. Turn with me to Romans chapter 6, verse 16. We're, 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 we've rounded the corner. Uh, we're going to get in here. Amen. I'm talking to every one of you. This anointing is for you. You in Romans 6, 16. Uh, know ye not to whom ye yield yourselves, servants to obey. His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin to, or to death or of obedience unto righteousness. Every Genuine servant of God is a breakthrough candidate. Whew. Man. Man. How's that? Because you're operating in the anointing. Remember over in Genesis 14, uh, God told, uh, well, uh, Lot went down there and got his behind in a sling. I'll put it like that. Go to read the scripture for yourself. But Abraham heard that Lot, he called him his brother at that point, he had been taken captive. What did he do? He armed his trained servant, born of his own house. There were 118 of them. And he pursued them. But understand who he was training and who he was empowering. Anointed covenant men. Why? Because Abraham followed, Abraham followed directions. It wasn't just a normal group of men he was taking down there. They were anointed covenant men. Glory be to God. And what did that do? That positioned Abraham for blessings and increase. Matter of fact, over in Luke 16, he was honored. Remember the rich man and Lazarus? Uh, Luke 16, 23. The rich man and Lazarus, uh, the rich man, they both died. Rich man went to hell. Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. The rich man said, in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, the obedience of Abraham elevated him to a status in eternity. 
He didn't have the anointing that you have on you right now. He wasn't born again. He was walking in obedience and obedience to God's word positioned him in heavenly places. Come on, folks. Christ died for us to bring us to what? The blessing of Abraham. I said that Galatians 3.13. I'm not telling you to turn there so it don't count. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, and where it is written, the curse is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. Why? Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. The blessing of Abraham is found in obedience to the word of God. Abraham was, a sim was God's symbol of generational blessings. If we would, through obedience, do what God told us to do, the anointing will be our earmark and it will elevate us and people will be talking about what we did. Everything he did, it looked crazy at first. It wasn't crazy. It was following God and doing, God, doing what God told him to do. Amen, amen. Listen, I could preach on. I got plenty of notes. <laughs> but today... I wanted to put these elements in you, the power of God, the anointing of God, and how we access the anointing of God. It's done through obedience, not just hearing the plan of God, but doing it the way God told me to do. If you're wondering, oh, how do I hear God on that level? Well, if you're not born again, the first thing you need is you need to be born again. For those of you who uh, are born again, it just comes with spending more time with God, studying to show thyself approved. God will tell you what he wants and how he wants it done. If there's anyone else in this room and you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat after me. You might be backslidden. I want you to repeat after me. You might be in good stead. I want you to repeat after me. You might be wondering if this is for you. I want you to repeat after me. This is the pathway to the power of God. Let's do this. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father. I come to you today just as I am. You know my life and you know how I've lived. Forgive me, Lord. I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask you, come into my heart. Live your life in me and through me from now on. From this day forward, I belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, folks, listen. Uh, the enemy lost the fight today. We win. Glory be to God. Why? We're flowing in the anointing of God. Glory be to God. You are the frontline forces empowered for great exploits. Today is your day. We're going to leave uh, right now, and so I'm encouraging on the, the rest of your day to uh, maybe hear God, maybe replay. We're going to upload. We're, we have saved this message. We'll upload it to somewhere, uh, YouTube perhaps, wherever we need to upload it so you have access. This is the power of God. This is your jump in point frontline forces to do great exploits. Father, as we leave this place today, we thank you that you go before us to show us the way, above us to watch over us, behind us to encourage us, and within us to give us peace. We thank you for these things, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Have an awesome day, everybody. Frontline forces.